This is video number 60 and it's for all of the instruments. And in this video, we are going to learn a new time signature as well as a new kind of note, okay? So what I have on the board here are the time signatures that we already know as well as the new one. So let's review a couple things. The first time signature you ever learned was four, four time. The four on the top said that we had four beats in a measure. The four on the bottom said a quarter note gets the beat. Now remember, that four on the bottom is going to stay there for a long time. And most of the songs that you play, probably for your entire time as a musician, will have a four on the bottom. Okay? It will be a four on the bottom through the rest of book one and through most of book two. It's only more advanced stuff where that changes. I mention that because that used to confuse me when I was a kid going, well, why do you even have the four on the bottom? Of course a quarter note gets the one beat. That's what happens. A quarter note gets one beat. One day a quarter note will not get one beat. That's way in the future. That's a word that we have now, but that's why that four on the bottom exists. Okay? Then we learned two four time, and the only thing different was the top number, of course. Bottom number means quarter note still gets a beat. Top number means there's only two beats in a measure. Now you probably didn't notice a big difference when you went from four four time to two four time. The only difference was you only counted to two when you were doing your counting. Now, with 3-4, it's going to feel different. Of course, 3-4 time means that there are three beats in a measure and the quarter note gets the beat. The number on the top tells us how many beats in a measure, three. The number on the bottom tells us the quarter note gets the beat, okay? So, why is this gonna be different than 4-4 four, four, and 2-4? Well, first of all, of course, we're counting to three. We count one, two, three, one, two, three. But also, three, since it's an odd number, when you're playing, it's gonna have a little bit different feel to it, okay? Now beat one is still the most important beat. It's going to be even more obvious when we're playing in 3-4 time, all right? So there's our new time signature, three beats in a measure. What I want to teach you now is the new kind of note. So let's look at the notes we've already learned. We've learned a quarter note, then we learned eighth notes, and then we learned half notes. Quarter note got one beat, eighth notes each got half a beat, half note got two beats. Now open up your book to page number 28 and look up at the top there and it tells you what a dot on the, on the side of a note does. It adds half the value of the note. That's kind of weird saying, weird wording. What is the value of a half note? Well, the value of a half note is two, okay? Two meaning it gets two beats. So what is half of two? Half of two is one. So if we have a dot here, we add half of this. We add one. Now notice the dot is on the right side. And the dot is going to be on the right side whether the stem is up or the stem is down. Either way, the dot is on the right side. Now you may have seen notes that have dots above them or below them. That is something totally different. We will learn that later on. We are dealing with dots on the right side of a note. That's what changes how long the note is. And again, it adds half the value. Even though you're not going to learn this till partway through book two, I want to show you about a dotted quarter note. So what's the value of a regular quarter note is one, right? So if we add a dot, we add half of one. We add one half. Now I wanted to show you this because a lot of people end up, when they learn about a dotted half note, they're like, oh, a dot adds one beat. For a half note it does. But a dot for a quarter note, it adds half a beat. Remember, it's half of the value of the note before the dot. Okay, so the value of a quarter note is one. The dot adds half of that. Let's do one more, okay? This is not a note you're going to learn until way, way into book two. We do a dotted eighth note. Now, first of all, we haven't even learned yet, but that's what an eighth note looks like by itself, okay? Now, an eighth note gets half a beat. What's half of a half? Think about that for a second. The answer is one-fourth. So if we add a dot to an eighth note, we're adding one-fourth of a beat, okay? Now, one half plus one fourth, please don't say it's one sixth, your math teachers will be so upset with you. It is three fourths, okay? 
So a dotted eighth note gets three fourths of a beat. We will not learn that for quite a while because I gotta tell you, dotted eighth notes are some of the hardest things to play really accurately that you will ever, ever learn, okay? To play it correctly, really correctly, dotted eighth notes are really difficult. Three fourths of a beat, it's almost a beat, but not quite. 75% of a beat, those are tricky. Let's just focus on our dotted half notes, okay? So think about this. When we do chord notes, we use the whole bow. When we did half notes, we had to go twice as slow. And after one beat, you were halfway through the bow, right? Well, now, from quarter note using the whole bow, a dotted half note, you're gonna to have to go three times as slow as you go on a quarter note. After one beat, you're only a third of the way through the bow. After two beats, you are two thirds of the way through the bow. And after the third beat, you're finally at the tip. So three times as slow, watch. One, two, these are quarter notes, these are quarter notes. Now watch me do dotted half notes. One, two, three, one, look where I am, one third, two, three, one, two, three, one. That's three times as slow, okay? All right, now we know everything to be able to do number 103 in your book. So go ahead and open up, if you should have already been opened up, to number 20, to page number 28, looking at number 103. And of course, I'm going to put my metronome on. And the first thing I want you to do is bow in the air. This is to show you just how slow you have to go. We're going to start up here, and do, it starts off with quarter notes. But if you do this, you're going to run out of, out of room, okay? So make sure you do three times as slow. Okay, 103, bow in the air. And one, red, say, and go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Down, up. Repeat. One, two, three. Three, one, two, three. Super slow bow. One, two, three, take off. Okay, now I want you to shadow bow while I play 103. Shadow bow while I play 103 on open D. And one, rip, say, go. One, two, three. One, two. Now, super slow bow. Down, up. One take, two take, three take, off. Now why did I count eighth notes at the end? I want to make sure that you are holding that dotted half note long enough. One take, two take, three take, off. Off on an imaginary beat one on a measure that doesn't exist. Okay, now play 103 and open D. One, red say go. One, two, three. One, two, three. One take, two take, three take, one take, two take. One take, two take, three take, off. Okay? Going to 104. Now 104, we're in D major, three, four time. You always want to look at those things in the beginning. And then again, it has the repeat. Dotted half notes. Give it one take, two take, three take. By the way, that's six eighth notes, right? One take, two take, three take. Shadow bow, F sharp finger down, and shadow bow. One, red say go. One, two, three, one. Now play that with me. 104. And one. Red say and go. One, two, three. One, two, three. One take, two take, three take. One take, two take, three repeat. One take, two take, three take. One take, two take, three take. Off. Okay? All right. So. I would make sure, practice both of those. Make sure you're really understanding three full beats for a dotted half note. All right, before you try to do go on to the next video, which will have 105 and 106. All right, but practice those. Practice so you can't get it wrong, and then you'll be ready for your next video.